Good morning. So how do we survive watched house crimes with our faith intact? Well, some don't, of course. But as Jesus said, they killed the prophets, they tortured them, they did all sorts. The way of Christianity is the hardest thing that any of us will ever do. But the rewards are great and we get God's favour, which is lovely. Now, I would like to read to you from William Barclay's um, New Testament words, because he's talking about endurance. And he says that endurance is connected with joy. We might not think so. But then he said, it's the spirit which can bear things, not simply with resignation, but with blazing hope. Now, that seems a really tall order. But can we do that? Well, in Romans 5, it says here, verse 3. This doesn't mean, of course, that we have only a hope of future joys. That's because he was just talking about our faith in Jesus Christ means that God views us as righteous. But we can be full of joy here and now, even in our trials and troubles. These very things will give us patient endurance. This in turn will develop a mature character and a character of this sort produces a steady hope a hope that will never disappoint us. So how? How are we to survive these things and to develop the joy that Paul was talking about there? Well, in Colossians 1, verse 11, Paul says this. <clears throat> we pray that in God's glorious strength, you will receive power to cope with anything a power which will enable you gladly to meet life with fortitude and patience. So we're trying to develop a character that God approves of. But is this hope ever going to come? Well, I'm not giving you any dates. But in 2 Peter 3, and it's verse 9, and I'm going to read it to you from... William Barclay's translation, because in verse nine, he uses an interesting word. He said it's not dilatoriness, although some people think it is, which keeps the Lord from fulfilling his promise. Now, if English is not your first language, dilatory is a word that means you're, you're slow to do a job because you don't really want to do it. So you drag your heels. But God is not dilatory. It says it is his patience with you. He does not want any to be destroyed. He wants them to find their way to repentance. Now, some translations render that as they need to change their ways. Now, Watchtower has changed its ways in some circumstances, but only because they've been forced to do it by the governments. And it's not true repentance because they've put the angle on it. Oh, well, that they came up with the idea that the government should be dealing with crimes, not them. So God is patient with them. He wants them to change their ways and to have true repentance. And some elders will do that. So uh, giving them time to do that is God's love for them. But it will come. This hope will come. In verse 13, but because God has promised that it shall be so, we await the new heavens and the new earth in which justice will have its home. We have true justice to look forward to. Perhaps I can put it this way. We have won the lottery. We have won the biggest prize that anybody could ever offer us. We have won eternal life in peace, with good health, in a, with a decent home and enough good food to eat. That is worth waiting for. But in order to get this lottery, 
we have got to go through a flood of evilness and there's plenty of it in the world. We're going to help each other get across this flood because we have this joyful hope at the end of it that we are going to get this lottery. And then we're going to have to face storms of watchtowers making. But once again, with God's strength, we will get through it. It might not seem as if we're going to. We'll get depressed. We'll get ill. But we will, we will get through it. And we're going to patiently endure with joy each day that God is going to help us. We see how he helps us. And we're going to develop the sort of character that God loves, that he declares us righteous because we have faith in this hope and in him and Jesus Christ. So thank you.